Guys, welcome to the 20th episode of the Journey for Greatness podcast. <laughs> Guys, we are fucking super excited today. We have a, a gentleman on board that <laughs> I don't even know how we connected, Wes. I really don't. We're sitting here in your car. <laughs> <laughs> But this is pretty epic for me. I'm, I'm super grateful that you've taken time out of your day to, to be with us. And, you know, just a little bit of, of a background on Wes. Um, you know, former professional soccer player. Um, came across one of your videos online. That's how I connected with you. And I don't remember exactly what video it was, but it, it spoke to me at a time in my life where I was try, trying to transition out of, you know, a mindset of being so focused on one sport. And I think I, ca- I connected with you on that. And... I was actually out by myself one night. I look up, I see Wes in a bar. You remember that up? Yeah, and yeah. And I came yeah, and introduced yeah, I myself. About this. I forgot about this. Yeah. And the the weird part about that was I was coming to a workout that you were guiding the next day. <laughs> and I was like, "What's up, dude? I recognize you from Instagram." I, totally I felt like an idiot, you know what I mean? And honestly, I was like, "Dude, you know what? On on the same token, I'm not going to feel bad cuz I noticed you on Instagram. It's kind of that awkward, "Hey, you know a guy, you've seen him on Instagram, and you honestly just, you don't know, you know, you, you yeah, know yeah, him, yeah. but you don't know him. Right. So I made that connection in a bar, it was weird, and then the next day, I was like, dude, you know, talk to you a little bit, and you were gracious, you gave me a five or ten minutes about how you started the podcast, sure. how you do things, and that's kind of the background of how Wes and I connected, and I've, I've kept up with your content, man, and I've, I've honestly, you know, it's taken me from a point just about a month ago, two months ago. And I've gotten, you know, connected with Katie Fit. I've done some workouts in the park, and you know, honestly, it's it's special for me that you're here, you know. And I just I just want to say thank you. Yeah, no, look, man, it's uh, it's an honor. I appreciate it. Namaste to both of you guys for be being, uh, you know, so gracious to bring me on the show. Um, yeah, Thomas, I remember that very moment. I it slipped my mind until you just r- reminded me, but. Um, you know, we're all on our, our different journeys and, and we're all looking to, um, we're, we're in different river, rivers, so to speak, and we're all flowing down these rivers. And in some of those rivers are people that resonate with our stories and that understand and, um, and feel uh, connected to our stories, maybe have had stories similar to ours. And uh, in tangential rivers, there are other people floating down their rivers. And just so happens, my man, it sounds like uh, the three of us are, are floating down the same river at this moment in time. I have to agree with that. And I actually, I have to say, me and, I guess, a question I had for you right off the bat here is me and Tom were actually, it's kind of funny, we were texting back and forth, and we had the the thought, should we should we have Wes in the, on the podcast? Should we have Wes in the podcast? <laughs> and Wes, we're not going to lie, we we're kind of nervous asking you because, listen, you are. I just you are, told him that. You are an idol to us. You know, we, we definitely do look up to you. We listen to your podcast, as we said, Creating Space. We follow you on Twitter. We follow you on Instagram. We follow your work, and we, we, we admire it. So we were a little nervous asking you. And I guess my question would be is, you could have said to us, ah, uh, you know, I'm a pretty busy guy. I don't know, maybe. But you said, yeah. You said, like, something like, hell yeah, let's do this. Or let's knock this out. Why? Why, why was it that you said, yeah? Uh, what I want to implore to you guys to remember as your entrepreneurs uh, in your entrepreneurial journey is that the hardest word in the English language for human beings to say is no. Um, and once you recognize that to be um, a fundamental truth in your experience of life, you can use that as a very large weapon and a very large blade. So, for instance, and, and when I say blade, I say it metaphorically uh, for myself, for, for, for light and for, for love and for purpose. So, with that being said, um, if you guys develop enough value and are supportive of other entrepreneurs, whether they be idols, like I, I'm not sure why you guys idolize <laughs> what we're doing in creating space right now, but you know, the, the, the bigger influencers who are further along than myself and then ourselves in our journey right now, the one thing you can always remember is that the more value you add to their lives, the more valuable you are to them. So you guys have consistently been 
champions of, of the Creating Space message. You've posted, you've reposted, you've tagged, you've liked, you've added value into my life, whether or not you really realize it or not. So if you were to come to me equally, listen, if you guys were to come to me out of the out of the blue and I don't know who either of you are, and I've never heard a life tip of the day, and I've never had a good, and I've never had a good laugh. Like, th- then it wouldn't. It would be an easy no for me to, to to say. But because you have have taken the time to engage with my content, um, you've probably passed the the podcast on to friends. You've you've been a champion of the message. You've done favors for me, and this is just a way naturally to be able to add to to back to your life and to level the score and equally. Look, man, it wasn't too long ago that I was in the same exact place you guys are in. As a matter of fact, um, I want to say episode number 34 on the podcast is a podcast episode with Howard Bihar. Howard Bihar is the former fucking president of Starbucks. And I recorded that podcast from my car. So it's not very long ago that I was grinding just like you guys were grinding just to get a chance, just to get a snippet, just to get a glimmer. Um, And it's all about once you get that glimmer where you put your fucking head down and make that glimmer like a beam of light. And and, and the more energy you put towards things, the more energy it will replicate back uh, into your life. And this is just, um, you know, the mirroring process. You get out of it what you put into it. So um, I respect the hustle. I respect the grind. I'm probably going to do an Instagram story right now at some point to document this because this is document worthy. This is what it takes. Um, This is how you have to kneel yourself to your ego. You have to do things that suck, that are not glamorous, that you wish people necessarily wouldn't want to find out. But what you realize is that the things that are not beautiful, the things that are gritty, the things that are dark sometimes in nature... Those are the things that people relate to. And the more you can open up that part of your life and the more you can expose that part of your journey, the more relatable you are and the more your mission and your purpose will spread because more people can feel connected to it. Mic drop. We just just dropped the the snowball mic in the car. (laughs) No, but (laughs) Wes, I honestly, it's funny that you talk about your dark times, you know, your, your times where you almost want to shield them from other people. You don't want to tell somebody like for me, when you were talking about, you sold, I can't remember, you sold your, what was it? Your, your car, your, all your belongings, everything in the, (laughs) everything in your possession when you were in Vancouver and you didn't have anything and you were riding your bike three to six miles per day and you were going to work, you know, passing over the bridge that, you, you know, you famously talk about in your podcast. And it's funny, I'm in a, in a spot, I'm sleeping on an air mattress, you know, okay. and I'm renting my room out. I'm talking to Eric about this, renting my room out, renting my couch out on Airbnb. And I'm in a point where I feel like I almost felt ashamed of that. And I made a couple stories where I was like, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to be ashamed of being in a point in my life where I'm kind of restructuring my, you talk about restructuring your reality, mm-hmm. how much of a chore that is. And, and we talked about it last night, Eric and I going down that slippery slope of suck and it was like fuck dude like i'm at Epic that point video by the way love that video actually watch it whenever i hop on instagram i'll definitely hop on there and, and i'll watch that video i love that a slippery slope of suck i love it i love <laughs> yeah, it. it and it's funny because i actually posted that video and then deleted it right away because wasn't sure that it was going to land with the punch that I thought it was going to land. And then I stepped back for a second and I said, what am I doing? If I'm worried about what what will happen if I swing the bat, then how am I ever going to hit the ball? Mm. So I posted it again and lo and behold, just like an artist that paints a picture that he's not happy with and he's afraid to show everyone, doesn't think it's his best work, all of a sudden the eye of the beholder is switched to the beholder and people view it in a much different way than you had actually viewed it. So, how many times has that happened where you've actually, you've pre, and we talk about that. I actually made a video where I prejudged that you were going to say no to, you know what I mean? Like, sure. I was like, dude, Daddy, he's not going to say, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I let that, I let that. It's stories, man. Ste- they're they're the all seed. stories. Look, your, your doubts, your um, misbeliefs, your mistrust, your lack of confidence. It is all the story that you tell yourself. Um, 
Here's something that I believe wholeheartedly, and this comes directly from myself. I believe that everything in the universe is neutral by nature. I think everything that happens to you is neutral. I don't think it has any inherent meaning. I think you as the interpreter are the one that gives it the meaning. I think you can interpret it to be something that is negative and maybe a friend that you have can have the exact same thing happen to them and they can interpret it to be a positive thing. So that is mindset and that is perspective. And I believe that you can take anything that happens to you in your life and you can choose to view it in a scope or a lens that can either be for you or be against you. And the, the further you get into neurochemistry and neuroplasticity and understanding that the game that you're playing um, is about neurochemistry. It is about the chemical balance inside of your head. And the more you can play towards the chemical balance that suits you individually as a human being, not necessarily what helps other people, but you got to figure out how to tinker with your own neurological system, how to make yourself happy, how to make yourself content, how to recognize and become aware of your own thought patterns that are negative. Because a lot of us deal with what's called subconscious incompetence. That is where shit's happening at a level and you're making decisions or reactions, or you're living at a place where you're not conscious of what you're doing, your behaviors you're not aware of, the decisions you make and reactions you're not aware of, you're living at an unconscious level. And these are all behavioral systems and patterns that you've structured throughout the entire your entire life. So just like when you get into a car and you start driving and you get to a destination and you don't even remember the, <laughs> the process of driving, that's exactly how most of us are living our day, but it's not until you graduate to a level of consciousness or, or of competence where you're actually saying, whoa, now I'm like, now I'm observing how I'm about to react and now I have an actual control over whether I engage in that action or I don't. So as an entrepreneur, this can help you deal with fear because the two most important aspects of entrepreneurship are fear and belief. And the more you can figure out how to tap into fear and to siphon the energy of fear into belief, the more you can like life hack yourself. The more you can hack your happiness, the more you can hack your system inside and the more you can make the system work for you. But it sounds great in theory, but fucking fellas, it's a it is tough um, and, and like everything else, the hardest part of the journey is actually beginning the journey, right? Mm -hmm. Like the hardest part of getting the, the, the weight off your chest is actually touching the chest and beginning pushing it upward. So once you get it off your chest, then you can move it. But first and foremost, it's starting that journey and working on yourself and your thoughts. Now relating that back to the fear of me asking you to be on the podcast, do you, how many times have, has somebody like Eric for me reminded you that your thought pattern is broke? Like, just ask him. You know what I mean? Do you lean on other people? Or is that more of an internal? No. You know what I mean? Is that something that you have somebody or just might be? For me, I, Eric has, a, I believe, a very you know positive mindset. You know, constructive. And for me, reminding me that, dude, your mindset's broken sometimes. Yeah. Ask him. You yeah, know. Yeah. So is that something that you found even when you're in your dark kind of your your low times? Is that something that you know, did you lean on somebody? I think you mentioned that was your, was it your ex's dad? Was it, yeah, yeah. he was so, a mentor? Or was I, that yeah, he was really my first mentor. A great memory. You guys must have listened to the podcast today. But anyways, great mentor of mine at that stage in my life. He was a mentor of mine because he was starting to t talk about feelings. He was modeling a, a, a level of masculinity that I had not yet witnessed. He was a man that could talk about his feelings. He could talk about them openly and freely. Um, where I had been raised in the way that I had been conditioned before, that would have been seen as like weak, hyper right? feminine and yeah. weak and, yeah. and, and that was just inappropriate or, or not even an option. And to see this guy hyper successful, doing really well financially pers and personally, to see him succeed with that type of nature was the very first time that I saw that a different type of behavior could exist. But to get to your question, um, it, it becomes a conscious choice. Your environment, no matter what that is, where you live, the job you have, the people that surround you, the money you make, 
all of it is a choice, man. Like, it's a choice. And you're there based upon the consecutive choices that have compounded to create your reality. So the coolest thing and what creating space is all about is about recognizing, all right, what's gotten me here no longer fucking serves me and I'm not going to go in that direction anymore. So I'm going to detach and I'm going to start to choose what it is that I want and little by little I'm going to reconstruct my reality by reconstructing my thoughts. So if you can break it down to its purest part, it's just about awareness and it's like, all right, if I don't like the way that I think, I should probably get away, get around people that think like I want to think. And then if I think like them, which we're just, a, you know, if you want me to take it to a whole nother level, I mean, <laughs> at, the end, <laughs> at the end of the day, we are, we are just, we're, we're a bunch of stem cells. We're a bunch of, um, <laughs> a bunch of DNA, right? And these stem cells, what they do is they adapt to their environment, right? So, so medical surgeons can now take s- stem cells out of your knee they can place it into a damaged cartilage inside of the joint of your shoulder and those stem cells will adapt to that environment and they will grow to supplement whatever that environment requires. We are just trillions of those things in the shape of a human being. So the moment we change our environment is the moment we're forced to adapt. Humans are the most, uh, we are the apex predator because we are the most adaptable animal. Mm. Like we can adapt to all environments. Um, and if you don't believe that there are people living in Antarctica, you know, just like there are people li- living in the tropics. So I could go on about this shit for days, but <laughs> at the, to, to make it real simple, you have control over every piece of your environment from the fabrics that you wear to the foods that you eat, to the friends that you hang around, to the jobs that you have, to the, to the courses in the universities. All of it is a choice, man. And you you're the king yeah and i almost feel like i'm in two realities right now like i was talking about eric last night and i you know i'm working at a bar okay i'm working at a bar working at a juice bar so like i feel like half of my reality is the vision that i have for my goal reality right Right. like i go to work out monday i did a yoga class after woke up went to yoga did katie fit went to another yoga class this is tuesday wednesday another yoga workout Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the bar, nothing. Sure. So it's like, did you have that transition? Maybe not in your life, but have you witnessed anybody almost changing the reality, but being <laughs> stuck in between two realities? Where Six like, months ago, I was during the during the week all day long. I was grinding, building podcasts, and then at night, I was coaching fourteen and eighteen year old kids soccer. So I was still caught in like this soccer reality and it felt so inauthentic it felt it it, it would damper my energy it was it was disheartening Mm -hmm. right because every bit of me was being thrown into the new venture of building this platform of building this brand and then i'd have to go to this old reality which would just crush me and look look that's not to take anything away from soccer coaches they're they're incredible human beings that are molding and teaching kids life skills on top of 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 soccer skills but it just wasn't my path and it didn't it didn't fulfill me any longer so there was like an eight month gap there where i was trying to be two different people and it just got was it a hard stop or did you did you it but for me thomas i'm not saying this for everyone but for me it. it had to be because if i don't burn the ships behind me if there's an inkling that i may turn back i might turn back and so i almost I have to have that you. pressure I want to interrupt you because for the people that may be listening that financially i'm making the excuse myself i'm talking to myself right now yeah you may have a false story in your mind yeah i i can't afford this i right i need to work this job i have to bartend i yep. have to do this yeah what do you tell those people <laughs> <laughs> i say that they're uh they should look up the they should look up the website upwork um if you guys haven't figured out what Upwork is yet. Upwork is a listing service that allows people looking to work remote based jobs um, can can apply for jobs and also companies that are that have positions that need to be filled. They can um, 
go on there and you can apply to take a position there. You can become a social, you could take over a company social media, you can be a social media consultant, you can be a copywriter, you can do, this is how people are, they're signing on to Upwork, taking jobs, making upwards of $50,000, $100,000 a year, working remotely, living in Bali, mm. being a copywriter. Like, like there are always, always, always creative solutions to problems. There are people that go into Goodwill and they spend four hours a day. In the morning, they'll spend two hours in Goodwill buying as many clothes as possible and they'll flip those and they'll sell those on eBay. There's people that make really good money doing that. There are people that literally walk into stores. I'll give you one that I'm working on. Yeah. All right. I'll give you right, something I'm working on right now. <laughs> if you guys don't know about affiliate marketing right now, you should begin to look at, at what affiliate marketing can do for you. For instance, the more you build your podcast and the more you build your platform and the more traffic you're able to generate, then you can start to have brand partnerships. And these brand partnerships will say, okay, I like that you have this amount of traffic. How does that work for me? And I'll say, okay, let me show you how it'll work. I'll take the impressions that I have generated, the traffic that I'm getting that I can point in different directions and have them go and interact with products. Now, for every, let's, let's work a promo code. For every individual that comes to a landing page that we generate and they type in um, healthyjuice.com slash creating space. If they purchase using that creating space promo code, I would love for you to throw me back a percentage. Cool, all right. So let's say I get in with a website company, all right? Those website companies cost anywhere from two grand to $10,000 to build and construct a website. That's nice money, right? Yeah. I got so, what I'm thinking of right now. Yeah. Right? So all of a sudden, I can come to those website companies and say, hey, look, a lot of the people in my audience, they they need websites. They're beginning entrepreneurs or they're creatives. They need websites. How about this? How about for every one of my audience that comes in and comes from my, my uh, sources and purchases with you, how about you give me a kickback? Now, how about we say just a round number, about $500 every time that happens. So $500 off of off of $2,000, that's 20%, that's not bad, right? So, you know, $500 off of 10 grand is not quite as nice, but a flat rate 500 is okay. Now, if my hustle is good enough, and if my audience is loyal enough, and I've done enough work, what's 500 times 10? Yeah, sure. Okay, now all of a sudden it looks a little bit different. So there's ways to creatively take your hustle and your grind and what makes you specifically you and, and to be able to make that make money for you. So it's yeah. about using some creative uh, outlets to discover what could work. It's tough when you're in that you're, you split reality because I, I don't know, it's just a tough deal, um, you know, when you're trying what? to yeah. go for it, Diddy. Well, well, I was going to say, you know, me... I actually, Wes, I moved out of my house kind of at that next, took that next jump in my life. And one of the things I did was I kind of sat back. Tom, this can almost kind of help you out too. I don't know if we ever talked about this. And I really sat down and I thought to myself, okay, there's a lot of stuff I want. But there is, what are the, what's the stuff I need? And I was definitely able to financially in my life look at look at that and definitely cut some costs. I just right. feel like there's a lot of you, you know, do you have to go out on that Saturday night and spend 100 bucks at the bar? Do you have to go out and buy that that hat for 50 bucks? I just feel like a lot of people want yeah, look, stuff. Look, assuming assuming that your audience is enough hustler, they're enough of a, a, a an adaptable and a resourceful audience to to know that cutting those those things should be the first thing you cut out of your life. Um, the second thing you should do is figure out through a budgeting system is what's costing you the most money. For me, oddly enough, I was spending like $275 a month on coffee, right? <laughs> so like, Holy shit. right, right. So that was because I was sitting in coffee shops and I was working from coffee shops. So you don't recognize how much money is going out until you start to take a look at it. But what I want to express to your, to your audience is you don't have to be present 
at a job for you to be able to be paid for the energy that you exert. Mm. There are there are online alternatives to where you guys could literally work for six hours a day on your computer and three hours inside of that schedule could be knocking out three podcasts a day mm. um, and growing your audience. And, you know, um, for instance... I, if you guys are, are really good now at building great images for Instagram, which should has graphic design is going to have to be something for you guys to, yeah, to get better at, I would go to five businesses and tell five businesses that you'll run their IG account for a minimum of three months. That's 90 days of pure hustle you'll have to put in. And I bet you a company will offset their Instagram for you to manage it suits suit to nuts for a minimum of 500 but 500 bucks per month per month yeah. uh, that's easy like that's an easy sell that's that's just a tad over a hundred a hundred bucks a month so uh a hundred bucks bucks a week so it the most important thing that i want to leave with your with your listeners is it's not actually the fact that you don't have the opportunity mm. the fact is the way you view the opportunity which goes back to the thought process that you have it's not a it's no longer the days of the 1980s and 90s where you needed to, to get a landscaping job and go cut grass for eight hours like there are creative solutions you just have to start using your creative mind and having conversations with creative people to figure out where the creative outlets are that you have a skill set that you might be able to a implement immediately or falsify and figure it out on the fly. That's what my dad always said. Fiverr, falsify, you know, <laughs> falsify and son figure it out on the fly. And it's so true like you got to throw yourself in the deep deep end to see if you'll sink or swim. I love it, dude. That's definitely something I'm going to be taking advice on. Yeah. That's unreal. There are so many people out there. This is a fundamental issue. There are so many people right now who know, small business owners, who know Instagram is so important, who know social media is vital. It is the lifeline to the growth and the, the exposure of their company, but they don't understand it and they don't want to do anything with it. Whatever. And they just say, I don't care. That is, a if you know how to speak business into a small business uh, small business owner's ear, it's an opportunity. You could walk into 15 businesses a day and you can say, I will manage your social media. I help social media companies grow and here's how I'll do it without even a clue. And then when you sign them on, you call someone who has a clue and you sit down with them and you say, how am I going to do this? And you go figure it out. And that's what life's about, man. Just like you guys are having a podcast in this car, you're figuring it out on the fly right now. Just rinse and repeat that process to the next problem that you have that you want to solve. I love it. I like that. Eric, Eric how does that, how does that sound? How does that resonate? <laughs> No, I definitely, that's, you know, what you're saying, so I work, not to start rambling, but I work at a gym really fast, and the guy who's worked at the gym, I think this is kind of what you're saying, but really fast, he's basically worked his ass off for so long, that when he's sleeping now, he's making money, because his gym is open, so he's basically, like, worked his ass off, and... It's to the point now where he's really not around that much, but he's still making money. Is that kind of what you're saying or no? Yeah, listen. In hard, a sense. Hard work does pay off, but a lot of people are not actively constructing their life to make their money work for them and more so yeah. than anything else to make their energy make money for them. So it goes back to the affiliate marketing place yeah, or that you are, write a book or, or writing whatever. books yeah. these passive streams of revenue these multiple streams of revenue that you can begin to construct they take time and it's going to take a lot of energy at the start to learn how to make it go for instance i wasn't very good at instagram a year ago but i needed instagram as the lifeline to grow the business mm. right to grow the exposure of the pod then I got so good at Instagram that I ran a webinar and a multitude of webinars to teach people how to use Instagram to grow their business. Then that added a stream of revenue from a skill set that I had developed. Mm -hmm. So one of the most lucrative things you can do in the world, which most people say teachers like they make no money, 
the internet allows teachers to make money at scale. There are people ma making money giving seminars, webinars, um, online coaching uh, co consultations, people that are teaching and coaching people. I mean, I bet you guys could pick up online clients to teach the skills of hockey. You could get online clients to teach the skills of you know, d dumbbell rows or, or whatever, you could break down what you know into uh, educational modules. You could teach that and you could make money out of those revenues. I mean, it's just creative ways to start to think about business in the modern day using the internet because it's at scale now as opposed to, you know, the, 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 the classical, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, the classical yeah. sense, which there's nothing wrong with that. And some people enjoy a, a life with a low level of noise. They don't want a lot of responsibility. They don't want a lot of noise in their life. But then there are others that are like, yeah, give me that, that noise. I need that. Like, I want to take the noise and I want to turn it into something that I can supplement my life with. So it's all about who you are and knowing yourself is key. Well, we're yeah, that's about awesome. time, dude. How, yeah. Man, I think we should say our thanks. <laughs> a tremendous amount of well, things. Well, I, I think really fast. Anymore. Yeah. I think we both got the... So, Wes, if you... We, at the end of every podcast, real fast, we, we do a, a grinder of the week. And I yeah. think that, you know, me and Tom both probably have the same idea. We usually nominate somebody. But, I mean, our, uh, my grinder, I'm going to probably say Tom's grinder of the week <laughs> or more than the week. You know, just the grinder in general is going to have to be you. You definitely, as I said, you know, you're definitely an idol of ours. And when we see him, we, we watch your stories and we're like, shit, man, he's got like that many stories up. Like we got to get our game up. We see how much you post. We see the content you put out. You hold us. I don't know if you know it, but like you're holding people like us to a high standard to put out as good a content as we can and do as much as we can to hustle to hopefully one day be on your level. So your grind, your hustle every day. 100% makes us grind and hustle every day too, man. Well, listen, man, um, I, I can't tell you how much that means to hear because sometimes I'm thinking I'm not doing enough. Like I need more. I gotta, I'm looking at the people above me like you guys are looking at me, the, the Gary V's, the Lewis houses, you know, I'm looking at those guys thinking I'm going to catch you guys <laughs> and it's only a matter of time, but that's how I have to tell myself that's how I have to think or else I'm not going to enter the arena. Do you know what I'm saying? And so the fact that you guys are finding people that are executing in a way that you desire to execute will only mean that it's a matter of time before you match equal to or greater than hustle than the people that you are hustling with, right? Like I can't remember if it's Jay-Z or if it's Drake, but he's like, at one point his idols became his rivals, you know, and that's only supplemented by the hustle. So what I'll say to you guys is continue on. But what I'll, what I implore for you to mention, I had a podcast recording today with a guy who fell into fame. Okay, and I can't mention his, his name, but he'll be on the podcast on Thursday. Um, but he fell into fame. And uh, he, he didn't necessarily think that he wanted it, but subconsciously he realizes he did. And inside of fame comes a lot of things that he wasn't and nor no human can be prepared for. Mm. So remember that I hope what you're grinding for is not to be in front of large amounts of people to have your name in the headlights because I think that if you are doing that from a selfish place it can be um, it can it could be misadvent or disadvantageous it could yeah. be detrimental but what I will say is that if you guys are doing it to serve other people which I believe you are yeah, you're trying to vet the stories of people that are either have done it or are doing it to serve your audience in a unique way then you're gonna win because light and love it always wins but lastly detach any expectation for what winning may look like mm. it may not look exactly like you expect it to look like but that doesn't mean that if you it doesn't look like what you want it to look like that you haven't won all right so you're gonna get yours but yours might not look like his or hers it's gonna be yours and the moment you open it up to be yours and not expect it to be his or hers is the moment that you can be proud and you can be aware and you can be grateful with what you got 
All right. So that's the last thing I'll say. And and uh, I hope that you guys keep pushing forward. And at any point you want to bring me back on the show, man, I'd love to support you guys. Wes, we appreciate it. Yeah. At the end of every episode, we we honestly give our listeners thanks, whether it's a minute, five minutes, 30 minutes. They have hopefully stay with us the entire time here. I think this is just, you know, value packed from your end. I, I, I'm sitting here just mulling it over i can't wait to re-listen to it but from the bottom of my heart man thank you i I really you know sitting here you know for you to be humble literally zero ego saying listen like these guys were at where i was at yeah you know whatever amount of time ago and for you to do it you know in this situation i can't even you know a thousand percent i I will have to say guys and, and, and this will be the last thing i said i believe it's probably close to a year to the day that i was sitting in this very seat having a conversation with Howard Bihar with a mic literally attached underneath a bunch of books uh, because it had an arm attached to it (laughs) and it was draped over my shoulder and I was having a conversation bent over about like I am right now with the (laughs) former president of Starbucks, a guy that built it from a place at Pike Point, Pike's Point to over 15,000 stores across the world. Like, it's not that long ago that I was in the exact same place you're in. So just keep going. We appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. All right, man. Let's get her, get her done. Thanks, Diddy. All right. All, All right, right, Wes. Well, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, no doubt.